so what is up people of YouTube? I am D, D is me, and I am back with another video. Alright, so if you can read from the title, today's video is going to be about enlisted members, specifically active duty members, going to Air Force ROTC. So, without further ado, let's get into this video. But for starters, let me start off with a little background about myself. So, I served four years in the Air Force as a firefighter. I just got out, like, what, like four months ago? Yeah, I just got out. And I always knew I wanted to be an officer. Since the ninth grade, which was like, what, seven, eight years ago, I always knew I wanted to be an officer. I would have never in a million years, ever, thought that I would have enlisted in any branch of the military, I always thought, you know what, I'm just going to graduate and become an officer. Although I knew you needed a degree, but still, for some reason, I was just like, you know what, I'm going to graduate and just, like, become an officer. So, I think, like, my senior year, I, I don't know, I just decided to enlist in the Air Force. I don't, I don't really have an actual reason, I just wanted to do it. So, um, I left and I went to basic three months after graduating. And I got to my first base, well, kind of like fast forward to my first base. I knew the urge to become an officer got even strong. Like, it became like an obsession. So, I got to my base and within like two months, I was already at the education office. Like, hey, how can I go officer? Like, what do I have to do? Not because I hated being enlisted. I love, love, love being enlisted. I loved it so much. I would not change anything at all. I'm actually glad I went through it because I had the mentality that officers are, are up here and the enlisted members are down here. So I was like, I want to be an officer because I want to be up here. But it is nothing like that. It's actually the exact opposite. I'm glad I went through being enlisted so I can, I guess that like, that, that um, thought could like go away. Yeah, so I decided to go to the education office and find out more information. After a while, I had started to, I'm not going to say the dream of becoming an officer died down, but I wanted to focus on my career now, or at the time, like now, instead of worrying about my future. If you worry about the future so much, your now will be affected, and that will affect your future. Damn, that was deep. That was deep. That was the so I decided to um, like focus on now or whatever and like focus on my job and doing what I have to do to make the best out of my career. And plus, at that time, I realized like to be an officer, you have to have a bachelor's degree. So I was like, you know what? Let me just go to school, focus on my career, and just go to school. So that's exactly what I did. So um, anybody that's enlisted right now, anybody in the military right now, you know that your contract flies by like that. I mean, I got to my three-year mark and I was like, because I signed a four-year contract, I got to my three-year mark and I was like, oh shit, I was supposed to be going officer. Like, what am I going to do? Like, what is my plan now? I thought about um, OTS, I thought about AECP, I thought about ASCP, funny story on that actually. I thought about um, ABC, so I thought about every, I mean, even going to the academy, I thought about everything. So, at my three-year mark, I was just like, you know what? Let me give ROTC a shot. The thing is, when I was in, I didn't want to cut my contract short, so that's why I didn't really go to any of those programs. I really, I wanted to finish my contract. I did, I did like being enlisted, and I wanted to, like, stay enlisted, honestly, at the moment. Because I'm like, I just, I, I want to know what it feels like to be at the bottom. Like, I want to know what it feels like to have the best ideas, but nobody listens to you because you're an E3 or E4. Like, I want, I, I know what that feels like. I decided to, I gave ROTC a thought, and I was like, you know what? I could possibly do that. So, I knew my sister lived in San Antonio, so I looked at um, schools in San Antonio, and I found the University of Texas at San Antonio, which is home of the Detachment 842, the best the best in blue, hands down. Uh, so that's the detachment that I'm at right now. So I decided to separate and join the detachment. Honestly, the reason I'm making this video is because like, 
when I was getting out, I would read forums. I would try to watch videos. Like, I was trying to do all the research that I could because getting out is a huge, huge step. Like, that is a huge step. And you have to make sure your ducks are in a row before you get out. So, I never really saw any videos of anybody going through the experience that I'm going through. I saw them forms, but like that's just reading, like it's not a whole lot. Um, I know it's a lot of like enlisted people watching this, so let me tell you how RTC works because I did not know how it works. So at RTC you have freshman, sophomore, um, junior, senior. Two years, two years. These two years are your GMC years, which is general military course where you're kind of like at the bottom, kind of learning how the Air Force works. And these two years are your POC years, which is professional officer course. In the middle, Right here, you have what's called field training, which is kind of like basic training for um, ROTC cadets. I haven't went, hopefully I can go next summer, hopefully, pretty guy, I'm chosen to go to field training. So basically, how it works, this is at my detachment. Keep in mind, at my detachment. All detachments work differently. This is only at my detachment. My detachment, detachment 842, we have PT on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 6 o'clock in the morning. Then you have leadership now, PT, leadership lab, and your AS class, that's across the board at any detachment. So the only, the only difference is the dates and the days and stuff like that. So we have PT on Tuesdays and Thursdays, then you have leadership lab on Thursdays at like four o'clock. And then you have your AS class, which is aerospace studies, I think. Yeah, aerospace studies on, um, on, well, that's kind of, that, that kind of depends on whatever day you choose. So, because that's like a regular class. That's just a class teaching you about the history of the Air Force and stuff like that. Do you wear a uniform? Yes, you wear a uniform. Yes, you have to wear your blues. Yes, you have to wear ABUs. ABUs at my school is for POC. Um, GMC, we wear blues. So, basically, I mean, the really the way it works is the cadets run everything. So, you have a cadet wing commander. You have um, squadron commanders. You have flight commanders. You have... Um, you have um, physical fitness command, not physical fitness commanders, physical fitness officers, safety officers. There's just a whole bunch of different officers because you're literally like training to be an officer. So they're going to put you in this position where you're leading. Keep in mind something that my detachment are going to be different because I have a huge detachment. I think our detachment is like the sixth largest in the nation or something like that. So we have a huge detachment. Let's see, what are some of the things that I didn't know when I was... So I used to always see 200, 300, 400, all that. So what that is, basically, is it's your level of school, basically. If you're freshman, sophomore, so freshman is 100, your AS 100, sophomore AS 200, junior AS 300, senior AS 400. You have 500s, 500s, they are on like a special case, and you have 250s, so 250s are those people that join your, they join their sophomore year. So that's kind of would be me, but I serve, so I'm a I'm a 200. I go automatically into my 200 year. Um, so a two, 250 is kind of like a 100 and a 200 mixed together. Like you're you're taking 100 and 200 classes at the same time, but you're considered, but you're in a class with 200s basically. So, All right. So as for training, training in ROTC is kind of I don't want to. Eh. It's different than it is in the enlisted world. In the enlisted world, we are, how do I put it? We are, in ROTC, we learn things that, I served four years in the Air Force, and I am still, in ROTC, I'm learning basic things that I feel like I should have been, you know, I, I should have been on these things, like, but when you're enlisted, you're not taught these things. Um, so, for instance, with us, where well, am I in the test, man? When you get in trouble, well, not like serious trouble, but if you, like, miss a time hack or um, something is just off, something is wrong, if you do something like that, instead of getting on your face like you did in basic, in basic, you know, you mess up, you're getting on your face, you're doing push-ups, you're doing flutter, flutter kicks, crunches, something like that. In RTC, you're not doing that. You're doing a memo. In the memo, um, I don't know if a lot of enlisted people know what a memo or lower ranking um, enlisted people know what a memo is. I didn't. I never even read a memo until I got to RTC. Enlisted members, like, they don't really teach us that. They teach us the fundamentals on how to make the Air Force work. 
in RTC, we kind of learn kind of like the back, the back of the house type things that you don't really see. In which, that's kind of how it is with officers. A lot of people say that officers are like pencil pushers and, you know, they don't do anything. But you have to realize that officers do the things that you don't see. You don't see the, the background. So officers kind of get the bad, kind of not a bad rap, being, you know, lazy or whatever they like to say. The people in RCC, well, not the people, but like, I guess like age range, because this is a big one that a lot of enlisted men or active duty members go into RCC. This is a big thing that they want to know is how are the people going to be like, um, like age wise and stuff. Well, that's, well, that's what I really want to know. I felt like, I'm only 22 years old, but I felt like when I went to RTC, I was going to be, honestly, one of the, maybe the oldest guy there. Like, I thought I was going to be the oldest person there. Like, everybody's going to be like 18 or 19, but it's nothing like that. Actually, there are a lot, a lot of people that are older than me in RTC. Um, it's not nearly as bad as you would think. Like, there, there are so many different situations in RTC. I mean, granted, a lot of them are 18 and 19 years old. But honestly, the when it comes to, like, the maturity level and stuff like that, it's not as bad as you think. It's not, near, like, I honestly thought I was going to be there with a whole bunch of kids. But it's not, like, it's, it's really not that bad because they're just, like, they are very motivated. Like, the cadets that I work with, they are, um... So motivated, so dedicated. It's just, I don't know, like, it's honestly a good environment, good, like, just good feel to it. Now, not all the time is it good, okay? Every now and then, your age will tend to show, like, I mean, I'm only 22, I'm not that old, but in the military, like, you are given responsibility at such a young age, and you're, you're, you're for you are literally forced to grow up like you it's like you're, you're thrown out to the wolves and you have to learn how to survive and that's why a lot of us we may be like young but our knowledge level and our maturity levels is usually higher than our age because we are given responsibility so fast and we have to forcibly like grow up you just have to realize that you are among Kids that have not found themselves yet, you know, they haven't, they haven't, they haven't grown up yet. They, they don't even really know what they, who they are. So you just have to kind of like be patient. And as long as you can do that, like just realize that they're kids. I don't really have that problem, but every now and then I'll see them and I'm just like, oh God. But as long as you can realize that, like you'll be perfectly fine. Alright, so now, my experience in RTC. So, my experience has been one of the best experiences ever. Like, I don't think I could change anything. Back to that um, AECP program thing. Um, so, the A, I think it's A, AECP or A. A I know there's two, but I can't remember which one would pertain to my situation. So basically what just happened was I just received a full Air Force ROTC scholarship. A full scholarship that, yes, that beast that everybody's like, oh my god, it's so hard to get, oh my god. I just received it. I'm super excited about it. But the funny thing about that is when I was enlisted, I was going to go for what's called the ASCP, Airman's scholarship commissioning program and it was the other one also airman education commissioning program some is is i know both of them are um programs that you can go to but i can't remember which one like i said pertains to this so basically when i was in i was going to try to go through one of those programs i was going to try to apply but the guy that i was working with was telling me like, oh, is this continue, blah, blah, blah. So that honestly kind of discouraged me. So I was just like, you know what, I'm just finish out my career. I'm not even going to go try to go through any officer programs. I'm just get out and go to ROTC, blah, blah, blah. So it's funny that now that I got out and came to ROTC, I ended up in the same exact boat that I was trying to be in 
like two years ago. You know, two years ago, I'm like, dang, I wanna, I wish I could get in this program, get the scholarship, and go to school and blah, blah, blah. But I couldn't do it because somebody told me that it was discontinued. In which later on I found out that it wasn't. But by that time, I, I had hit like my three year mark and it was kind of like too late. So now that I'm here, I'm just like, what? Like now I, I just received the scholarship that I wanted two years ago. And this time I wasn't even really trying, really. Like I wasn't like, I wasn't really trying for it, honestly. But luckily, I got it. All right, so my advice to any enlisted member that is after duty, that is thinking about getting out and going to... RTC. My best advice would be to just, you know what? I would say just do it. Fuck it. Just get out. Just, just get out and, and live happily ever after. But I know it's not that easy. So honestly, what I would do is I would, if you're using a post 9/11 GI Bill, move to a city or move to an area that has high BH. Simple as that. Like, no lie, that's, that's just the truth. Like, I mean, New York has an amazing BH, but at the same time, they are very um, expensive. Cost of living is very high up there, so it's kind of like a, you get the BH, but you're going to spend it. So it's like, you know, just find out what's best for you. Another bit of advice is to do it now. Don't wait. Do it now. Just like that commercial say, what are you waiting for? Just do it now. And why do I say do it now? Because most of the people that's looking to go to RTC are usually like senior airmen, maybe staff sergeant. Once you get up in a tech sergeant, master sergeant, you don't want to lose all that pay to go to RTC. Like, that'll be kind of not really that smart to come to RTC. So I say do it now because you're not making a lot of money. Honestly, like let's just be honest. You're not you're not really balling like all the civilians swerping down you're doing. They're swerping down that you can buy fucking matches and Lamborghinis, but really you broke as hell and the only thing that you can afford is a damn butt light at the damn shop at. I got out as a senior airman, I had nothing to lose. Like what did I have? I barely had any damn money. I was always fucking broke anyway. And you're not broke because you just like we don't make money. Like you make the money. But you're broke because you're around a whole bunch of other young people that's ready to fucking blow money. So, I mean, let's spend it. Who cares? Fuck it. Let's go to the strip club. And the worst, 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 worst thing you could ever do is make rank and then get out. I literally turned my test down. I turned my staff test down. I said um, I, de I declined testing because I knew I was getting out. What sense does it make to test? Pass the test, you have a line number, and then in a few months you get out. You just stole a spot from somebody that could have made it when you're getting out. Like, what sense does that make? Be considerate of, you know, your wingman and let somebody else have that if you know you're getting out. Why would I have tested if I know I'm getting out? Like, that doesn't make sense. And the numbers were super high this year, so I'm positive I would have made it. Why would I... That would have been stealing a spot from somebody. That's crazy. I, I don't understand that. Just don't do that. I guess another piece of advice is don't be that priority that's like, you know, I'm prior enlisted. I know everything about the Air Force. You're going to be let down real fast. And you're going to get to RTC and realize that there are so many things that you were never informed of that you have no clue of. And you're just going to be there looking stupid and like a know-it-all and nobody's gonna like you. A lot of people are asking me about how to pass the AFOQT and I can't really say what's on the test. It's like against the rules. I can't so just get a book. Get a good AFOQT book. So I think that is all the advice that I have and I hope I thoroughly have answered all of your questions. If you have any other questions do not be afraid to leave comments below. Don't be afraid to hit me up on Instagram, Snapchat, or whatever else. So yeah, hit that subscribe button. And until next time, I shall see you guys later.